Steel, and I'm the mechanical engineer. I'm Natalie Natanza, I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm Nick Gilbert, I'm an electrical engineering major. And I'm David Asimai, I'm a computer engineering major. And our senior design project is creating a kayak automated steering design. So when we first started, we had the idea to create an automated steering mechanism for an electric trolling motor. And then we wanted to adapt it to a personal kayak that we already had. So here are the specs and everything for our kayak. And it's mainly used for fishing on lakes by paddling, but we wanted to automate it so the operator could travel long distances and maneuver and balance with the added weight of the fishing gear. And to do this, we wanted to create a system that could be easily adapted to the kayak design with minor hole drilling. We wanted to be able to take it on and off fairly easily. And we wanted to um, have the kayak maintain proper balance um, when we added our system. And we wanted a low cost option compared to other options on the market. And we plan on doing this by conducting proper calculations to decide what equipment we needed, as well as power inputs and outputs, and how we would fit all the components that we decided we needed together most effectively. And we wanted to utilize a servo motor to, for our steering system, and we wanted to control it all with an Arduino board. And we wanted to create this whole system that would work with the trolling motor that we already had. And this is a CAD design of what we wanted to do. We have the battery right behind the seat of the trolley motor or the seat of the kayak. And then we have the mount and everything on the back. And we have the servo motor with two cables connecting to a turning mechanism on the trolley motor. We'll now go over the electrical components of the system. The Arduino Uno will be used to control the speed and the direction of the motor. It, was, it will be powered by a 12 volt marine battery. It will interact with the motor driver to control the speed of the motor. It will also interact with the sewer motor in conjunction to the steering mechanism to control the angle of the trolling motor. The voltage regulator will be used to convert the 12 volts from the marine battery to a more linear five volt to control the motor or the microprocessor. The remote and receiver will be used to send instructions to the mic to the Arduino to control the angle of the servo motor. The rest of the components are labeled on the right. One to note out is the electrical box that will make the system waterproof. This is the parameters of our trolling motor. And then this is the schematic using all of those components listed. I can go a little bit over the uh, electrical schematic. <clears throat> Here you see that we have the battery. For the concept, we use a 9-volt battery, but in reality, we're gonna be using a 12-volt battery. Uh, that's gonna be connected to a voltage regulator, which is gonna uh, step down the voltage to five volts, so we can be supplying that to the Arduino board. <clears throat> the same battery is gonna, be it's gonna be connected to the motor driver, and it's gonna have a direct connection from the motor driver to the trolling motor. Um, and then the Arduino board and the motor driver are gonna be connected together through the uh, focus modulation pin and the direction pin as well, which is gonna be, the motor driver's gonna get signals from the Arduino board, you know, so we can steer the angle and get the speed that we need for it. Um, lastly, we also have the servo motor uh, that's gonna be connected to the Arduino, and then the transmitter, which is connected to the, uh, to the Now, uh, to get all of this uh, started, uh, we had to program an Arduino board. Um, some of the main concepts that we had to keep in mind was the full switch modulation, uh, which is uh, the whole uh, concept behind the uh, transmitting a, a digital signal into an analog signal. Um, there's a couple of uh, lines of code that are the main uh, lines on the whole uh, project itself. The analog write pin, we have digital write, and uh, those are pretty much going to be repeated throughout the whole process of the program. Um, full speed modulation is uh, very practical because you can transform a digital signal into an analog signal. As you know, um, it's using a variety of uh, speed controlling devices applications, and it's also very effective in controlling motor speeds too. Um, and some of the lines of code here, uh, 
first of all, we have to uh, initialize all the variables. Uh, we decided to use a top position control switch. Um, and that way, we're going to use two reverse keys to keep the speed. Uh, one speed, one position of the switch is going to be an off speed. So we had to set all that up in our uh, code. Here you can see uh, we have the position one uh, linked to a pin number from the Arduino board. We also have the pulse modulation uh, linked to another pin in the board as well. We also have the value, which is gonna come from the x in the switch, we're leaving it off, and also we have the direction. Uh, this is a setup of the pins. Uh, since we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna be using three pins for reverse, six pins for forward, that's nine pins. Those, all of those are going to be input pins, and then we have two output pins, which is going to be the PWM and also the, the direction pin. Basically, uh, this code is going to uh, be repeated throughout the whole process, uh, depending on which speed uh, the actuator uh, selects. So, for example, uh, this digital read is going to check if a value of 1 or 0 has been uh, sent to the board. Uh, if it's a value of 1, then it's going to move on to the next line. This is gonna. Uh, this is pretty much gonna activate the direction pin, and it's gonna send a value of one or a value of zero. Value of one is gonna be five volts directed to the pin, or zero volts, which is just off in case it's not uh, connected. And then the analog right is gonna activate the pulse width modulation uh, pin, and then it's gonna send a analog wave to it of uh, that we selected. Uh, we selected the values to be between sixty and one hundred and. 60 uh, with intervals of 20. Uh, the minimum is zero, which is off, and 255 is the maximum, which is uh, always off. Here you can see uh, how we uh, set up the wiring on the Arduino. Uh, from the voltage regulator, we have five volts coming in, and then we also have the negative or the ground to it. And then on this side, you're going to see all the digital pins. We set up our pin three to be the uh, pulse modulation pin. Number 13 is going to be our uh, direction pin, and then the rest of them from 4 to 12 are input and output pins as well. Like I mentioned before, we will be using a 12 position switch. Uh, we, have to, we have to solder each one of the pins. Uh, since this, uh, it has 12 positions, you can uh, select the positions manually. Every time a position has been selected, it sends a signal of one to your board, and that way the position of the speed has been actuated. Um, and here you can see a little diagram of how we distribute all the all the uh, the speeds according to the position of the switch. So we always start on the number four, which is going to be your off position. And then if you want to move forward, you just keep spinning to the right one at a time, and it moves increases in speed. If you want to go in reverse, you just move to the left, and it also starts increasing in speed as well. Here's uh, some pictures of the soldering of the wires to the uh, position switch. It's kind of tricky to get it done. The pins were super tiny, and uh, I don't know how much experience it's come in before, so some of the parts were in connection. Um, but after a couple of trials, we got it done. Um, this is us, uh, to some of the wiring on the components. You can see the electrical uh, box has in some of the the components. We didn't have this fully finished yet. It was just on the testing procedures of all the connections, making sure the wiring was properly done. And uh, here you can have a picture of, you know, your motor driver, your Arduino, and the breadboard that we use for some connections as well. Okay, uh, so I'm going to be talking about the mechanical side of the project. Uh, so this is our CAD drawing we have. Uh, this yellow right here is our actual kayak that we use. So I left it yellow because it's easier to see everything else. Um, this is the, this uh, gray thing is this aluminum plate right here you see right here. Uh, you can see the, the, the servo. There's the steering arm. And uh, to first uh, start manufacturing, you need a some kind of model or CAD drawing so that you can send it to somebody and they can just, or, or your guys on your shop can do it, you know? So, so that, that's where that comes in. Okay, the, the material, you can go. So we used uh, aluminum for the mount and we picked aluminum 
it is very strong, but it's still very light for um, to put in a tire. Um, it's also one of the easier aluminums to work with. When you roll, you didn't know we had some complications because it was melting as we were rolling, but we came up with ways to put it, to uh, put the rest in here because it was melting when we were rolling. But um, it is also corrosion resistant, so it's very perfect for it. Uh, and sorry. <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll talk about how we got the stresses for so that we knew it could hold the trolling motor. Uh, so we did the finite element analysis. So the way this works is it, the model grabs like little sections, like it turns it into a mesh and it grabs little sections of uh, the geometry and grabs uh, the stresses of, out of each little square, right? So you can see right here is the scale like so the more red it is, the more stress concentration that there is. So you can see right here, these are where the bolts are at. There's two, again, two more over there. Um, so a moment was applied right there, resembling this uh, trolling motor right here. The force going like that, kind of like a twisting motion. Uh, so with that, and we got we put the constraints here in the bolts to simulate like a realistic, you know, like a model for this. Uh, so, so the yield strength for this aluminum is 40,000 psi, and it only applied 375 psi. So it's well under the, you know, it's pretty safe. You know, it's not going to fail. So with this, the kayak would probably fail before the mount does. <laughs> Yeah, so our kind of our results right here kind of, I don't know if you can see that graph a little bit. Basically what that tells us, um, since it's a straight line, it didn't make a curve. So if it was a curve, it would have been like a, a yield. It would, it would have been half the yield. So it's still in the uh, elastic region, so. And after that, we just hit the town on that. <laughs> that uh, that's me right there. That's Natalie. She worked on the big aluminum. Anyone know how to weld aluminum? <laughs> <laughs> so we found out it was very hard to weld aluminum. Mm -hmm. so, but there it is. We, we did it with rivets. You know, um, there it is. It's already mounted on the kayak. Um, So the results of our design for the electrical portion, here is a picture of everything hooked up to the trolling motor, and here's a picture of um, all of our components inside that control box and everything powered on, and here's a video of, of our system in our moving motor. Oh yeah, it's spinning up there, see? <laughs> testing, um, we actually put the mount onto the kayak, and we discovered that the servo does turn the trolling motor shaft effectively, and the cables, you can see here, bent out of the way correctly when it folds for travel or storage, and the kayak was then tested on the water to ensure it's stayed balance, and we also have a video of that. It's moving forward. <laughs> And it floats, and it's not, it's not tipping sideways, you know, so it's kept level. Um, so our conclusions is, um, our trolling motor mount was successful after several adjustments, um, and the electrical parts of the system are wired properly and functional, and the code we developed um, did effectively control that motor. And so the electrical control system is functional, and we can control the variable speed. There's still work to be done to make it more efficient and more effective. Um, we did have extensive experience on selectively durable aluminum coming up with aluminum 6061, which we talked about. 
and we did have a cost-effective design, and some of the electrical parts did not work up to specifications. We had some issues with batteries, and overall the CAD was balanced with the system integrated, so um, all the parts worked together to create our desired result overall. So, do you have any questions? I saw it demonstrated that you have the the motor operating. I didn't see demonstration that it's steering. Does it successfully steer? So we didn't actually test the steering yet <clears throat> because uh, we didn't have anything mounted all the way until uh, the last testing, uh, you know, uh, uh, testing steps. So uh, this is the motor that will be steering. We haven't actually electrically tested it work and that's the electrical work that we still have to, to work on. So this kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we did some presentations earlier today with some people that like to go kayak uh, fishing today and mm -hmm. uh, some people brought up the uh, the concepts that are already out there um, and I believe somebody mentioned a particular brand that already has a kayak with a similar system to it. But the downsides of it is that you have to buy the system with the kayak. You cannot just uh, buy the system for any kayak. So that's one of the benefits of our system is that we can implement it to any kayak. If uh, we get a model, uh, we make any changes to the uh, um, to the mountain plate, and uh, pretty much it'll work on any system. Because uh, we've talked to at least two or three people and uh, they own kayaks, they like to go kayak fishing, and they all own a battery and a motor because after fishing for all day long, some people just want to get back there and just get out of the water. So most people already own a tow motor, most people already own a battery. Our system will just be implementing those two, getting rid of the manual labor of, the, of uh, controlling the motor and steering it. You can just be sitting in front of it and then just you know, deal with your remote and just let the fish just keep it and not. So it was a cheaper alternative for what's already out there in the market. Um, it is definitely modifiable and it can be adaptable and it can also be mounted and unmounted easily with little modifications to the overall design of the kayak structure. Um, actually, you mentioned that one of the aim of this project is the, uh, the cost of the project. Yes. So uh, what is the total cost of the project and is it competitive? $400 to put everything together, but then again, we also already had some stuff. But um, we calculated everything that we did, and if we were to put a little bit more profit, it would be about $400. Considering the fact that everybody already owns a motor and a battery, you know, they go kind of in hand to operate it, our system will just implement in the steering and just keep going forward to it. So for that system, which will include the mounts, the electrical box, the wiring, the programming, and all that, We'll probably be somewhere between you know, 400 and 600 dollars. Is it depending on labor? Another question: What happens if, if, if the, the kayak is upside down or falls into the water? What what happens to the electronics? So the electronics are housed in uh, an electrical box. The electrical box is waterproof. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that it doesn't happen. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's one thing we didn't really test to be honest with you. But uh, that was one of the measurements that we had just to make sure that we ever see in case that happens our electrical box is still fully functioning. And then of course the server motor is waterproof. Uh, we had to find a waterproof motor for it to fit our application. Uh, I noticed in the test that it, the water was very, very calm. Uh, did you test it in in a current? anywhere or is it is it designed more for open water more, more for open water because yeah. yeah. this kayak is uh it's made for uh, like carrying kind of like cap kayak cap canoe where you carry a lot of stuff so you know the skinnier kayaks are made for rapids this yeah. one's made for lakes so. mm -hmm. and how about I have to go back several slides, I think, because I saw the ratings, the specs on the on the kayak. It was I thought rated for three hundred fifty pounds. Two hundred. 
350 pounds here. 350 yeah. pounds. Okay. That's the weight capacity. And how much does the battery weigh? Oh, the battery weighs 20 pounds. This weighs uh, 315. Pull back. Yeah, uh, that one weighs 13 pounds, so it's, I mean, yeah, it, really, really it really depends how much how, on, on the person that buys it, because, yeah. you know, it's, you, you got to really think about the weight. I think it's somewhere around 50 pounds for the whole spectrum yeah. of running battery and motor, and the electrical box, but the electrical box was a heavier one, a way back there. So when you were conducting experiments, did you did you try different thrusts, different uh, size of trolling motors, or did you just use this one based on the specs of the kayak? We use this one because it's what's available out there, the most available for people. Um, it, you know, this one is like a 30 pound test, and it's just right for this size of a kayak. Cause there's bigger ones, but yeah. they're for bigger boats, like bat boats and all that, but that, 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 would, be, that would be too much. So we decided on a 30 pound truck.